Welcome to Tov Jewish News Channel. With us today is Yoni Ben Menahem, an expert on the Middle East. Hello, Yoni. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm doing great, Yoni. Yoni, in the couple of past months, we're witnessing the war in Gaza, and you, as an expert on the Middle East, do you know what are the latest developments in the war? The, actually, the IDF is now moving uh, towards the uh, south of the Gaza Strip, uh, bombarding uh, the areas of uh, Khan Yunis and Rafah. Uh, and uh, the main purpose is to try and locate uh, the head of the snake of the Hamas, the, uh, uh, the head of the military wing, uh, Yihya Sinwar, uh, with uh, his, uh, the gang that is surrounding him, uh, uh, the chief of staff of Hamas, uh, Muhammad Dev, and his uh, deputy, uh, Marwan Isa. This, uh, the three of them, this triangle is the triangle of terror who initiated the, the attack on Israel on the 7th of October. And uh, the army is uh, uh, trying to, uh, to find where he's hiding. Uh, apparently, according to sources in Gaza, uh, the, the three of them are hiding in the tunnels deep in the ground, and uh, there are also some reports from Palestinians that uh, they are surrounding themselves with uh, some of the Israeli hostages as a human shield so that uh, the Israeli army will not assassinate them. Yoni, uh, and where do you see the war going? Do you see Israel progressing in Gaza? Because we haven't seen since the end of the ceasefire any news about Israel capturing new territory. What is exactly going there in military terms? How does the operation go on? The operation is going very slowly. You have to understand that there is a big difference between the north of Gaza and the south of Gaza. The south of Gaza is very crowded area with refugee camps. Uh, and uh, there are also uh, some American restrictions on the war in the south of Gaza. This is a special, special request of uh, President Biden from Israel uh, to be very careful uh, not to evacuate the uh, population, uh, not to bomb a uh, uh, population. And uh, so the war has to be handled very carefully and uh, Israeli, Israel gave a, a positive answer to a president, uh, President Biden and promised that they will do, it will do the best uh, to refrain from uh, hurting uh, innocent civilians. So uh, the army is working very, very slowly. We have, to, we have to remember that it's only the second or the third day that uh, the army has started working in the south of Gaza. It will take a lot of time. Uh, but there are definitely achievements. Uh, uh, we, uh, the Israeli army, uh, managed to to kill a few of the commanders of Hamas and, and uh, capture uh, dozens of terrorists and uh, destroying some infrastructure in uh, in the south. It's only the beginning, and it's going to increase from day to day. Uh, Yoni, if we zoom out uh, from. Gaza to the rest of the Middle East. We have recently seen, you know, some very bellicose statements from some of the leaders. For example, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, that said that Israel is committing crimes against humanity in Gaza. How would you explain those statements and what do they mean for the future of the relations of Israel and Turkey? This is not uh, surprising, you know, President Erdogan is the last one who should talk about uh, Israeli supposedly war crimes. We, we have to remember some, some of the history, how Turkey massacred uh, the Kurds, uh, more than a million Kurds. Uh, now he's talking about us. And also, there's a very important thing that uh, people should know. Um, Erdogan uh, is the leader of an Islamic party, uh, the Justice and Reform, this is how it's called. And uh, this is a branch of the Muslim brother, Brotherhood uh, Movement, the Global um, uh, Brotherhood Movement, which is also uh, the mother movement of Hamas. Hamas belongs to this uh, 
a, a Muslim Brotherhood movement. It's a part of it. So this is only natural that he will defend the Hamas and he also uh, giving a, a refuge to Hamas, the leaders of Hamas, uh, uh, some of them live in Turkey. Uh, the head of Hamas actually, uh, Ismail Haniya, he has a house in uh, Istanbul and also a house in uh, Doha in Qatar and is moving between uh, uh, those two cities. But his, his family actually lives in Turkey uh, under the hospices of uh, Erdogan. Uh, so uh, I don't. I wouldn't relate too much importance to to Erdogan uh, uh, since the, uh, more than ten years ago uh, we had a big problem with Turkey when they sent uh, this uh, flotilla to uh, Gaza, this uh, uh, Marmara ship, uh, a, a big pr provocation, uh, trying to break the siege. The, uh, that Israeli put on Gaza, and the Israeli army took on the uh, on the took over the boat and killed some uh, uh, t uh, Turkish terrorists or or militants or whatever they were, and uh, this caused a big crisis with uh, uh, Turkey. And, Yoni, uh, Yoni yes. would you say that uh, Erdogan's reaction is caused by pressure coming from the streets? You know, of course, the population of Turkey is very pro-Palestinian, or is the, his sincere reaction and he really wants to destroy all the relations he has with Israel by supporting in that way, you know, terrorists uh, in Hamas and in Gaza? No, no, he's, uh, he's a Muslim extremist, but at the same time he's a politician. And, uh, you know, we had uh, a, a big... Uh, a, uh, this connection between uh, Israel and Turkey, and uh, uh, they pulled out the uh, ambassador in Israel, and we pulled out our ambassador uh, in Turkey. And then two years ago, uh, he wanted, he started uh, courting Israel, he wanted a, a rapprochement with Israel uh, to improve uh, the economy in Turkey. And, uh, you know, he, he is looking about, uh, he's looking about the interest of Turkey uh, but sometimes uh, uh, the Islamic radical action or uh, reaction, emotion, whatever it is, uh, uh, comes out and uh, is uh, uh, delivering uh, very, uh, very uh, nasty comments. Like today, for instance, he, he said, uh, there's a statement I saw uh, on the wires uh, a few minutes ago, that is calling Netanyahu, the Prime Minister Netanyahu, the butcher of Gaza. And uh, he, he promises that uh, uh, he will take Netanyahu to uh, the international, uh, international court in Hague for war crimes. So this, uh, this guy is, uh, is unexpected, but this time is expected because it was obvious, I think, that Israel knew once there will be a war in Gaza and Israel will have to defend itself, that this guy will jump and start uh, uh, delivering uh, accusations at Israel. This is not something new. Whenever there was a, a round of fighting in Gaza in the last uh, few years, when, uh, whenever something like that happened or similar like that, he immediately jumped and started attacking Israel. This is not new, and we shouldn't take it uh, seriously. Yoni, for the end of our interview, if you could please run down the rest of our neighbors in the Middle East and talk about Egypt's rhetoric, Jordan's rhetoric, and Saudi Arabia's rhetoric toward the war. What what do they say about the war, and what does it mean for the relations of Israel with those specific countries? There is no danger to our relationship with any Arab countries. In the beginning of the war, I'll sum it up for you very uh, uh, very nicely. In the beginning of the war, there, there was a summit in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, for all the Arab League, for all the Arab countries and the Muslim countries. Uh, and of course, they denounced Israel for the war and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, said that Israel should stop the war and not uh, uh, kill innocent civilians. And, you know, the, 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 we know the slogans that they're using. There's nothing new about it. But actually, they didn't took any, any real step against Israel. A just, you know, statement condemning Israel, and this is an indication that uh, they understand that Hamas is a terror organization. As I told you, Hamas is part of the uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood movement, 
which is main, its main uh, uh, target is, since it was founded, uh, is to topple the Arab regime in the Middle East. So they know that uh, uh, Hamas is a danger. In Saudi Arabia, for instance, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is a terror considered a terror organization by law, also in, uh, in Egypt. So they know. And uh, if you ask them off the records, I asked a few uh, journalists uh, who are very close to uh, the regime in, in Egypt uh, and in Saudi Arabia, and they told me, look, we also want to get rid of Hamas. But, but please do it quickly so we'll not be under pressure. Just, you know, just try to get it over with as soon as possible. Uh, Yoni, do you see any signs of other countries around Israel, as we, as we mentioned, Egypt and Jordan or Saudi Arabia, accepting refugees from the Gaza war, which will, you know, ease the burden on the Israeli army and let it act more freely? No, no, definitely no. And uh, this is not to ease the Israeli army. He can fight uh, against the terrorists of Hamas. Also, if they will, these people will not be evacuated or transferred to, to other Arab countries. They, we, will, we will fulfill the task. I count on the Israeli army to do the job very thoroughly. It will take more time, but we, it will do it in, in the end. The, the problem is that the Palestinians are trying to present it as a new Nakba. Uh, uh, claiming that Israel wants to uh, transfer the Palestinians uh, in Gaza, from Gaza to Egypt, and also at the same time claiming that Israel wants to transfer the Palestinians from uh, Judea and Samaria to Jordan, which is a big lie. So uh, uh, the Arab countries are afraid that this will cause instability, because uh, if you take Jordan, for instance, more than 70% of the inhabitants in, in Jordan are Palestinians. So they are afraid that uh, this will uh, stir up uh, opposition to uh, King uh, Abdallah and maybe uh, cause in the end for a coup d'etat, uh, trying to get rid of uh, the king. Uh, this is why they are so hostile to Israel and uh, uh, coming out as accusations against Israel they're trying to calm down the Palestinians uh, uh, because they're afraid for uh, their uh, regime, especially Egypt and uh, especially especially Jordan. So uh, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't get excited from this uh, statement of King Abdallah. He's the last one to talk about Israel. I just want to remind you that uh, his father, uh, King Hussein, in 1970, in September 1970, he massacred uh, the Palestinians in Jordan, thousands of them who tried to topple his regime. So uh, he knows exactly what the, who the Palestinians are. So he should not lecture Israel about human rights and uh, things like that. He's the last one to talk. Yoni, it has been a pleasure to talk to you. What's with us today? Yoni Ben Menahem, one of Israel's leading experts on the Middle East. You are watching the Tov Jewish News channel. Please subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms. Thank you and have a great day.